more work on the bantam. I'm going to fit the tail light and do the wiring. I've been putting it off for ages, but I've just seen Michael Waller wiring up his Yamaha Commando hybrid. And this suddenly doesn't seem so daunting, shall we say. When you actually go in and look at it, you realise just how basic these bikes were. Had a bulb horn, so there's no wire into a horn, there's no brake light, there's no kill switch, you're just supposed to stall it, have the cover at a set so low that when you close the throttle she cuts out. There are four main wires which then branch into a dip and a main beam at the headlight and a spur is taken off the tail light feed to light up the speedometer. Can't get more basic than that. Oh and a switch in the headlight which is off, dip and main beam, or high and low, H and L. So I'll start with the switch. Just making sure that all the contacts are in the right place and what terminals to use. This is the original switch that was on the bike and Handy as it is, there's only three of the terminals with screws in them. So I presume that's the three terminals that had wires in them. Plus the post that sticks up at the back, which will be the main feed to the tail light, as far as I can tell. But a quick run through with the multimeter, just, just to test continuity as it's so old. But generally speaking, it's in very good condition. With the switch checked out, we'll go and put some wires on the bike. Remove the headlight lens and put a bulb on the shopping list, as I forgot to, to get one last time. And then just start feeding wires. As I say, it's such a basic, simple system. There's only one wire goes to the back from the, from the headlight itself. So I shall twin that with a earth. Again, as Michael Wallard says, it's it's better to have all your earths running to a central point and then there's no problem with corrosion against the frame and that sort of thing. So, what I have to do is bring a feed from the magneto up to the switch. This will then power the lights through the switch for a high and low and then a common terminal will feed from high and low to the back tail light. The earth I shall run from the headlight down to just under the saddle and then back to the tail light. From under the saddle then I shall bring it down and earth it directly to the engine so it has a good earth to the magneto. <laughs> and basically that's it. So here you can see me putting on terminals. I could have used the original Lucas connectors but I still prefer the Japanese bullets. They just seem to work better and last longer before they get corroded, better sealing. So they're all going to be tucked away in the headlight and under the mud guards so no one will know and the reliability will go up because of it. Once I'm happy with all the wires, the routing that they take and how they lay against the frame. I should just use ordinary insulating tape to create the loom. I have got some loom tape here, but as I say, it's four wires, you know? At this midpoint here, the earth from the headlight and the tail light join together. So I'm going to strip the two ends, wind them together and solder in the single wire down to the engine. Bit of heat shrink and the joints are good. Un. Uh, 
I use the same technique that NASA uses for soldering their wires together. So if it's good enough for them, it's good enough for me. Just don't think about Apollo 13. I find these little pencil blow lamps excellent for this sort of work. Just try and avoid charring the end of the wire. Although it's going to be covered in heat shrink, it's just good practice to try and get it nice. Heat the terminal and then let the solder flow rather than trying to heat the directly onto where the terminal is going or in this case the wires. And then on the single wire, going to the frame, a l little eye for the earth. As you can see, I'm trying to prop it somewhere so I can get both hands to do the, the actual soldering. Luckily I remembered to put the heat shrink on before soldering it. Very easy to do. I was close, very close to getting it wrong there. Here you can see me wrapping the wires up in insulating tape. With the few wires going to the back taped up, just leaves to wire in the actual tail light and headlight. Everything's loose at the moment because obviously as you can see the tail light bracket has to be painted yet. So forgive the wobbling. First thing was there was a bulb in here which worked. So that's something. Now I'm just checking which wires go where. Obviously that's the main. As with so many things on this bike, the tail light is actually a D3 unit, not the original single round unit that you have on the D1. Being very close to the end of production, I think they just used what was on the shelf if they ran out of something. I just upgraded it to the D3 version. The engine is listed as D1, the frame is listed as D1, but there are so many D3 and parts on this, it's a real pain sometimes to get the right thing. Obviously with the engine not running, I've just plugged a battery into the two wires that would normally run to the magneto uh, feed and return. And as you can see at the back here, I found the wire that powers the main bulb. And I'm just fitting a crimp connector to match the one that's on the wiring loom. In this case, a simple bullet.
as you can see, or maybe you can't, but the earth wire has uh, an eye on it. When everything's painted up and ready to put on for the final time, I shall use that eye to connect to the mounting bolt of the light unit and thus earthing it out. But for now I'm just using a jumper wire. And that's with the switch. Making sure that the switch works in both positions. with that so that's the rear end finished for now next headlight at the front it's a simple job I've already got two wires from the switch here in place with bullet connectors I shall do the same to the lamp holder so that if it ever became necessary to take the reflector off you wouldn't have to disconnect from the switch. Um, the bulb, a little trick I learned years ago, is actually 7 volts. That way if you over rev the engine or miss a gear or anything like that at night the bulb doesn't blow as easily. Not that this will be used at night, I can't imagine it is. But uh, yep simple case of winding in the wires and then connecting everything up and that's it basically with everything wired in place it'll be a quick test dip main beam job done Anyway, that's it for now. Thanks for watching.